Welcome to another HVACI technical claim video. Today's topic is heating system losses. In this video, we will cover a couple of common losses to both furnaces and boilers. To set the stage, let's take a quick glance at the significance of heating system claims and what the causes of loss are that are the most common. Right off the bat, you will notice the highest spike on this chart is 39% of losses were caused by wear and tear. And that should make you take pause and realize how important it is to conduct a full investigation to determine the actual cause of loss. And to add to that, we also find that another 8% of heating systems are determined to be non-damaged at the time of an on-site inspection. For a total of 47% of heating systems that would be, in essence, non-covered losses with no payments needed. So knowing that, let's dive into a couple specific damage scenarios for both furnaces and boilers that can normally be attributed to wear and tear. Let's start with furnaces and a simple definition that a furnace is an HVAC system that uses warm to hot forced air to provide heat to a conditioned space via the ductwork system. And while furnaces have dozens of components, we are showing just a partial list of the more major components that tend to fail and end up as part of an insurance claim. For today, let's focus on heat exchangers. These two photos are top-down views of a couple different types or models, and we should note most of these heat exchangers will be constructed of stainless steel. The combustion that's taking place at the burner transfers heat into these components, and then ultimately transfers the heat following that second law of thermodynamics from the heat exchanger to the passing air that's being pushed across it by the blower. So what can go wrong with heat exchangers regarding wear and tear damages? Rust, corrosion, cracks, and holes, as seen in these photos, are very common, especially in high humidity environments. Most of these damages are caused by age, a lack of maintenance, corrosive combustion gases, and a process known as thermal fatigue, which is the gradual deterioration and eventual cracking of the metal by alternating heating and cooling. The fact is, if you use a furnace often enough and for a long enough period of time, thermal fatigue is an eventual certainty. Here's a more dramatic photo of thermal fatigue, ultimately resulting in a significant crack in the heat exchanger. Generally, these are not sudden and accidental events and happen over a period of time. And as an adjuster, there really is no way to diagnose this condition as these are all internal components. You will probably need a certified HVAC technician to assist with this type of inspection, investigation, and diagnosis. Now we'll move on to boilers. A boiler is another type of HVAC system, and this type boils water and uses that hot water, or even steam in some cases, to heat the home via a piping system. Shown here is a list of some of the major components of a boiler system, but for this presentation, we are going to focus our attention to the failure of low water cutoff devices. And even more specifically, the mechanical versions, which come in different styles. And we see here a couple examples of low water cutoff devices installed as part of boiler systems. From a cause of loss perspective, the failure of the low water cutoff is probably the number one loss we see with boilers and is often due to the lack of maintenance or just age related wear and tear. The way the low water cutoff works is twofold. It operates the makeup water valve. So when the water becomes low in the system, it adds water to the boiler so it has adequate amount in the system to transfer heat away from the heat exchanger. And if the water level happens to drop too low and the makeup water valve isn't delivering the necessary water to fill it up, the low water cutoff will shut the boiler down. So it is a fail safe device. It's designed to make sure that the boiler does not dry fire, which is an industry term meaning a boiler that is firing or heating up without water in the system and ultimately cracking the heat exchanger or the combustion chamber. In this diagram, you can see how the mechanical float is designed to operate. The system has the needed water, the float is elevated, and the system is operating as designed. The lower image shows that the water has gone down either from a leak or normal evaporation over time and the automatic feeder has not replenished the water for some reason and the low water cutoff has reached the bottom and turned the system off to protect it against a dry fire and potential cracking of the heat chamber. So what can go wrong with these mechanical devices? This image shows a mechanical float type open and you can see that float we just talked about. Occasionally, the float itself will leak and become waterlogged, causing the float to sink to the bottom, even when the system has plenty of water in it. 
In that case, we would have a false negative scenario where the system would stop running based on the false condition that no water is in the system. So it's sending the right signal, but based on the wrong information. The bottom image tells a completely different story. We need to understand that the natural byproducts of the water being introduced into these boilers are what are known as totally dissolved solids, or TDSs, which essentially are mineral deposits that just exist in the water. These mineral deposits build up over time and will sometimes prevent the float from moving freely up and down as the water level changes, and perhaps it will get stuck in that up position. Those dissolved solids can also cause the water to foam up, which keeps the float in the up position, thus tricking the system into thinking that it has sufficient water when it really doesn't. In either case, we would call these failures false positives, and both could lead to dry fire we mentioned earlier. In the case of dry fire damages, the repairs can be very expensive, and the cost of those repairs often add up to more than the cost of a full system replacement. Thanks for tuning in to our HVACI technical video on common heating losses. We hope that this short video helps show you some of the most common wear and tear issues associated with both furnaces and boilers. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us by email at webinar at HVACI.com or call 888-407-5224.